Uh, Welcome to the friendly Jimmy's pre-show. Hello, everybody. Uh, that's Hello. a really good way to start. Hello. I Hello. want that every Hello. time. My booking manager, Sandy, sending me. Uh, just, just a quick word of like, uh, you're a cat. Just before you go, <laughs> puts you in a good mood. Is that what you got? Yeah, that's perfect. What? That is the ultimate compliment in Australia. It's really I good really motivation. Ah, oh, also, how many people out there, as this is the pre-show, know of Spanion? Spanion? Spaniard? Spanion? I know. Spanion. Spanion. Turn it down. It's so loud. But it is loud. Especially, it's going to get even louder because if you do know, <laughs> write in the comments, who do sadly? Yeah, there's some people. Well, now it's too soft. I mean, what is yeah, this? Is, 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 is this a, whoa, is now that it's better? too loud. <laughs> That's good. That's good. That's good. Okay. Yeah, I know him. What are you trying to do to Do you me? know him? Well, I can't hear it at all. Oh, thank oh, you for that. that. Everybody loves Raymond's sketch, and I think we do all have very similar voices. <laughs> I can't get it. <laughs> I want to get a word in. Thank Can you, you for the haircut compliments, Oi. everyone. Turn it up, bro. Oh, Fuck yeah. Six I gave dollars. him his compliments. Don't you think Ali looks like the director slash owner of a cheap porn site with a very specific niche? Like, <laughs> I don't know. Stepsisters on oh, Euro shit, trip. This camera angle sucks balls. <laughs> oh, I'll fix that. Which one is it? It's uh, that one. Uh, the new one. You, you keep rolling on. Yeah. <laughs> I would like to give a special mention and thank you to one of the key cameramen of Friendly Geordies, Miss Love Bella Brown. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is this shit? Yeah. Ali. Try and fix it. Okay. <laughs> the screen is facing the other way. Yeah, Ali, Ali. I love how the while audience is still the pre show, what do you think about this? Uh, it's so much worse now that it's moving around because there's only two media formats where you see a moving camera, and that is a Ricky Gervais show. And porn. And Birdman, that won an Oscar. Did it? Yeah, I think it did. Oh, well, that's lovely. Good for them. Well, I can't it. really remember what Have it was. Have you seen the new Golden Globes? No. Oh, Go dude. on, dish. First of all, I don't, in this post-COVID world, it was very different. Everyone was, like, at home watching it. So it was actually really sad. Like, Nicole <laughs> Kidman. <laughs> Wait, let's see, Miss Love, if you pass or not. Well... The point Ooh, was that for is sharp. the point was for us to be in close up, not Jordan. Well, so avoid Jordan. He's got a yeah. That's good. That's good. That's good. All right. It does look like you guys are on Afghani television. <laughs> the only reason I don't think it is is because there's an ass there, and if there was, you would have been beheaded on camera. Afghani live. How much better is that one? Why don't you, Whoa, what Ali? You why did you put? Why didn't you put that camera there? This is terrible. Switch them around. The no, f- that's you, your camera. It just got to. It just you, got to. You bring the. What about that bugs. one? That's the main camera. That's go to that. It just got to beheading mode. I'll and then go to the other one. Go to the one with you two. I d- I'm just, well, I'm he disconnected it. What? You see, this is why we need you to sign up to Patreon. No, the, this the, is right there. A subscriber. <laughs> Joseph <Brown. laughs> Thanks, Joseph. We really, really appreciate your uh, thing. Also, that reminds that. me. I don't know if you want this to be on the main pod or this would work, but Shazza, happy birthday, who is the brother of 12C Lock. Internet is fucking weird. A guy <laughs> whose name is 12C Lock on the internet who mm. messages me on Instagram said, guys, could you please, please make my brother's day? He watches uh, Jordan main channel, Jordan self help channel, the podcast, Neil and Jordan. He named everything. He's like, please, it's his birthday. We'll make his year. But the thing is, the guy who messaged me, his name's 12C Lock. Mm. And he said, my brother's name is Shazza. <laughs> so I don't, is that a guy's name? <laughs> without any name. Are you sure it's a man? All right, let's see. Let's see if Miss Love wins this one miss it'll do it'll do it'll do, it'll do. It'll yeah do. and it's uh, also very slow as well i don't fine. know why that is i should get an oscar yeah, yeah, you should get an oscar but also that camera needs to go because <laughs> i've downgrading it from afghani news to isis beheading shown no, on cnn oh, look at it i swear <laughs> when i fixed it it was not that slow did you change any settings miss i don't think so uh, All right, i don't think the, so after the pre-show i'll well, have miss a was what is known as the midas touch in the camera world <laughs> The I'm thing that he touched turns to dust. Oh, uh, fuck off. I'm changing all the cameras to that one. That's, I prefer it. No, oh, also, Ali promised to give us advice for investments. I didn't miss that one out. 
Oh, on the Up Late podcast. Yes. That's very true. You we'll will sign be up to Patreon. That, and you will only be reprimanding it because I really need advice. I don't know what I'm doing. I gave you some There's of so the many advice. options. The short it's like walking into Coles and trying to select a soap brand. Funnily it enough, is, that the short-term strategy task. which I gave you guys is now over. Which one? The zip pay? Yeah, because the shares are really stable now. So oh. you're not going to get like a million. But the medium term still exists. That's which just is my like focus. you, isn't it? I, I told you what the medium term was, right? I'm starting to think that Ali is going to be on CNBC in a couple of years when that Kramer guy dies. <laughs> <laughs> Kramer from Seinfeld is on the news now. I wish ducks are going. <laughs> well, actually, all right, all right. You're second in line. You can fill in for Kramer when he gets in there. And I think that every time that he calls one right, he's just going to have to go. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be so the good. other thing that yeah, I and it's already got it all for. Damn, Pat, because you can also say, and everybody knows that my stock standard uh, exchange that you should be heavily investing in, do I need to say it again? It's gold, Jerry. Go! <laughs> yeah. My friend Pop Sekimano says gold is on the way up. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? Gold is, uh, gold is actually a pretty good long-term strategy now. Long term because but you know, they always say gold is a good long term no, strategy. Now, and I suppose if you started investing in gold in forty four BC, <laughs> you would have made I was a say, lot of money. Age you, of Empires taught us that gold was good. I'll tell you why I <laughs> consider gold. I guess this is. Please say that this is it. You're just really like, ladies and gentlemen, the expression "good as gold" has stood around for a long, long time. No, I have a very different reasoning for it. I think gold is going to be a lot more valuable in 20 to 30 years, like significantly more valuable for the simple reason that right now all the currencies, reserve currency is the US dollar. US dollar is king. US dollar is basically gold right now. In a world where US is declining, the US dollar could not be that backbone reserve. And when that's not the backbone reserve, there's going to be other things that would need to back it up. And Won't it just turn into, I don't know, like Congolese bang bucks or something? <laughs> <laughs> Finally, and that, that's when I'm going to get involved. That sounds like fun. <laughs> Come on, change it to the CBB. <laughs> <laughs> well, CBB the Congolese, the I, I have a feeling that the Congolese would not trust that currency themselves, let alone the rest of the world. <laughs> hey, so they're lost, man. It might not. Nah. In a world where the US is not being able to provide the backbone, I have a feeling the Congolese big bucks <laughs> may have significantly more issues. <laughs> I, w- I like that there's the... Uh, <laughs> you know what? I wouldn't be surprised if someone find out what uh, the Congolese are trading it. I reckon it's either going to be francs or they will just peg it to the American dollar and everyone just trades it American dollars because they're like, we have a currency, but everybody uses it for kindling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did I tell you that I once met a guy from Zimbabwe and this was when um, they had just started using a uh, US dollar because their currency just became completely devalued. And let's be honest, if you're in Africa, lead by example, just just do what's in Bible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Give like, up the game. But I asked him, I was I asked the guy, <laughs> poor man, stupid question, but I asked him, I was like, hey, why didn't you just move to US currency altogether? Why didn't you just cancel out the zeros? And he's like, do you have any idea how many times we've done that shit? <laughs> That's brutal. It's like, no, I'm not aware. <laughs> but that means like, yeah, we've done that too many times. It keeps, the zero keeps building up. <laughs> when the system's fucked, it doesn't matter if you cancel it out. You know, that is a really good indicator <clears throat> of if you live in a fucked country or not. Do you live in America? If you do, check, that's fine. If you do not live in America and your currency is in American dollars, you do everything you can to move out of that country. <laughs> That is not a, that's not going anywhere good. What about Australia, though? Our currency is not US dollars. Well, you think that shot of Banjo Patterson is, oh, uh, yes, Benjamin Franklin. <laughs> no, no, I learned no but, but by that theory, you're saying we should all move to America. No, I'm saying that if our currency ever becomes American dollars, I'm going to get really, really worried. Oh, because yes. <laughs> We can't handle that kind of pressure, though. <laughs> now I get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. As soon you as know, as soon as the Benjamins come, the most disappointing disappointing thing that I experienced was when I went to Morocco. My wallet had I don't know like um, sand eight hundred <laughs> eight hundred Australian dollars, and I went there thinking, yeah, sure, I'll just convert that. You know, anywhere you go in the world, Australian dollar usually works. 
And I went to Morocco and they were like, huh, what is Australia? Like they, they did not, they, I, I was stranded <laughs> with no money. <laughs> it was very lucky that I was seeing someone that was meeting me in Morocco and they came and they had British pounds that I borrowed what? from them. What is, so they didn't take... No, they, they were like, sorry, it. we don't take uh, Australian dollars. We only take US dollars and euros. Is that it? And British pounds. So no, okay, British pounds. pounds. What about things that are close by, that's like uh, Ethiopian lira? They did like, that's, that was the other thing. There was a few other things too. There was uh, um, uh, the UAE um, dirham. There was the Saudi reals. That's what was pissing me off. You almost like, bitch. I swear we're kind of better than Saudi Arabia. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, that sucks. So like Aussie money in uh, Morocco is like, Scottish, Useless. Scottish, the Scottish money in in the UK, because when I was in England, Wait, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, I, I mean, well, when I, I was in England, Scotland doesn't have any more of them. No, nah, no, nah, they have their own money still. They still have Scottish money. And when I was in England, come on, it was just deep fried Mars bars. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> taste it is Stand good. Up. Yep. Uh, no, but I, I caught a cab call, At once. least call them kilties. <laughs> I caught I'm a gonna cab. try and fix that camera. It's You're not gonna be able to fix that. What are you talking that. about? It's not gonna get it's better than- It's moving slow. Oh, for fuck's it's sake. It's not going to do- uh, It's the slow-mo cam. Um, I, slow-mo I caught a, cam. I caught a, um, I caught a uh, cab in the wee town of Halifax, which is, if anyone playing at home, is in the north or slash Midlands of England. Uh, west of Manchester, who was who, who? Who won that? That's all right. I'll wait for an answer. Um, anyway, <laughs> and then I caught a cab, and I think it was a Pakistani cab driver actually. And he was, and I gave him Scottish money because someone, you know, it's legal tender in in the UK, and he didn't accept it. No, he begrudgingly accepted it after I had to haggle. He was just like, "Oh, that's very annoying," and I'm like but is it legal? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, well, that's not my problem, my friend. That's your problem. <laughs> and I had to like talk it out with him and eventually he took it. And I'm like, what a prick. I got to say, it is very consistent with your personality. You always be dealing in the most inconvenient currency humanly <laughs> possible. I don't think I've ever seen you in an interaction yes. <laughs> not transfer money from one bank account know, to the next. Fucked. And I, it's always just like, oh no, I... Transferred it in uh, my cousin's account. Look, you just give me like forty-five minutes, and I'll be able to pay for the spring rolls. All right, maybe, maybe an hour. I'm really sorry about this. Like, well, there's a always. huge line behind you. Is, so, you. is it cool if everyone just waits? It's so. Is it all right? I kind of got my girlfriend to read Barefoot Investor, and uh, don't really understand the mechanics of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. My my interpretation of the Barefoot Investor is like. So get four accounts. Uh, what's it called? Like splurge, uh, investor account, bank account. Yeah, and then what you want to do is just m- blindly throw different amounts of money in each account. And then whenever you're at a Chinese restaurant, whip your phone out and then just uh, sift through each account. The more annoying, the better until you find one with money in it. It's a one in four chance. So it's going to take a little bit of time, especially if your phone's a bit shit. And then everyone will start to get pissed off behind you. But then one of them might get angry at you. And then, you know, yin yang, right? It's all about, it's, it's all about perspective. So if you, you'll learn a valuable lesson if someone gets angry. You need, you need that, those experiences in life. It actually is a great <laughs> microcosm. <laughs> It is a great microcosm of how you've glided through life. <laughs> which yeah, is and I have glided. An, un, an unconscious con. <laughs> That's how. Because I'm pretty sure that you still live the same life as a six-year-old. Six-year-olds <laughs> don't have money. They just sort of walk around to wherever other people say, we're going to this restaurant, yeah. which you'll never object to. No. Any restaurant. Just like, of course. Uh, uh, okay. Oh, it, oh, this one's a rubbish tip. Well, there'll probably be some little pudding lids that yeah. I can lick off. Trendy. You go in there. Yeah. yeah. You go in there. <laughs> you find something to eat, and then that happens every time. So other people just get frustrated and say, you can pay me back later, of which you never do. Not true. <laughs> you are the I Kramer. Just, that is untrue. <laughs> Everyone, this is group. fake news. Fake news. I reckon I the- probably spent 10 grand on your lunches. <laughs> your lunches. Fuck off. Personally. I pu- who, who purchased the last however many lunches, huh? Who's got two thumbs and purchased 
various lunches. Are you lunches. talking about that chicken that you bought today? Yes, and some other lunches recently. It's, it's such a Kramer thing. What do you mean? Just coming in and being like, guess who's got chicken? Yeah, and a spaghetti. Did you buy that? Yeah. Are you sure you didn't use my card to buy it? Because- I'm very sure. All right, look. That is a two lunch rough patch, uh, <laughs> otherwise in an otherwise perfect theory. That's insane. That's, that's not true. <laughs> it's pretty There's, close. I'd say two in two in a week, or at least uh, uh, mine. So that's like a. I think every time we go out to a restaurant, you go. This is the exact <laughs> sequence. You say, "This one's on me." I wait for it. I just that's go. Here true. it is. Here it is. And then you hear that beep. Uh, okay, decline. That's not it's true. It's all right. I'll do it. That, that, happened, that happens. That happens every time. Once that is like that happened it's, once. Sorry, it's working, but now it's got bullshit on top of it for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> that's even. That's actually better. All I right, like so that. So now it's a beheading in 1992. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna have to cut my head off, dude. That's the only way that's oh, not gonna look. Before we go into the main show, I do need to ask. My little conies. No, 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 not yet. So close. You can deal with that little anxiety. But I need a question answered. <laughs> I am interviewing Bill Shorten tomorrow. Woo. Boring. And I have a question. What the fuck do I ask that man? Just say, how does it feel to be a loser? Now, see, everyone keeps saying, no one, no one has answered this question seriously, <laughs> which makes me really scared about tomorrow's yeah, okay, interview. Yeah. Because every single person that I've asked that to, what do I ask Bill Shorten? They're going to respond with a joke. And now that I think about it, obviously the My Little Conies are going to respond with jokes. Yeah, no, but I have no a serious I, answer okay, to that. Why don't you? This is what, <laughs> what? I would want to ask him. What? I would want to ask him that you, during the Anthony 2019 <laughs> campaign, the election strategy that Labor took, in hindsight... Do you think that that strategy was flawed or do you think that either way what you would have done would have resulted in the same thing? Yeah, but Ali, Sky News asks him that every week. <laughs> what does he say? I've got a better one. What does he say? Every time he always says, oh, I'd like to focus on what I was bringing to the table and what I think I could have brought to the table more is to realise everyone's got a different opinion. And then obviously wait, wait, he's that realised that that's going to sell really well with Sky News because in their little minds it will go... Okay, does this go into free speech or shitting on China? It goes into free speech. Well done. Thank you very much, Bill Shorten. You should be the leader. And I'm right, not just so look, saying that to destabilize Anthony and Albert. Here's a few questions. Can you read them yourself or do you want me to read them? Go for it. Go for it. Um, you no, can, no, no, no. What advice? Irish Burrito says you should ask him what advice would you give to Albert, as in not you, Bill Shorten. Um, fi- ask him what he thinks of WA's uniform tariff policy. Are you happy with it? Why would Bill Shorten know about that? Well, I think they're just like asking random questions now. Ask if allegations are true. Whoa, what? <laughs> no! <laughs> what was it? What was it? it ju- I just read it out. That doesn't matter. I don't, don't worry, know. next one. <laughs> Ask Bill about his thoughts on Lee sales. Now, this is the thing. I can't ask him anything about the media. I realize that if you're going to talk to someone who's still in the arena, it's... Actually, a dog act. As Spanion says, he's got this great piece of advice in Hood Logic, his series, where he goes, Okay, if you ring up a drug dealer and you say some shit like, Oh, can I get a coffee? Let's go play cricket. Some shit like that, you're as good as a dog. The cops will just go back and they'll go, Okay, look at how many times this cunt's been asked for coffee. Every one of those is going to be a drug. All you're doing is snitching on the cunt. You should have your legs broken. You don't. You shouldn't get any fucking drugs. When I was a dealer, that's what I'd say to all of them cunts. Fuck off. You know, fuck, we're not getting fucking coffee ever again. See you later. So that was just a blur. I didn't. That was just a well, white noise. Well, that is the experience <laughs> just, of listening that was to Spanian. Just, yeah, that was literally just turning on the TV, just. What <laughs> well, it was as soothing as that, so you could go to sleep to be sitting in there. Kind of. Like, Who's the logic? Yeah. If you are in a jail, you want to be in a jail with separate nashos. Yeah. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> what was the question? I'm. I'm. I'm, just, I'm, I'm in a daze. Um, <laughs> look, most of them are either jokes that aren't supposed to be asked, or, or they're like really basic questions like talk to me about aged care. It was like, oh, that's the headline of today. Look, I was thinking, and what does everybody here think about this? I was ask, I was going to ask him for an hour straight about his tin soldier collection. Mm, close. Well, Get a poll on, on that. It's on brand. <laughs> <laughs> well, you like Warhammer, don't you? Apparently, they do. I 
Do you though? Really? <laughs> I don't know if you do. I, uh, do you know? Like, I don't think you do. Microsoft man says, ask Bill whether he thinks Stalin did anything wrong. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> did you start off with that question? He's like, hey, look, I, I finally I'm here with you. Um, why? Do you think Stalin did anything wrong? Because I've had enough of these people arguing that nah, the starvation was good for diets. And right, stuff. so I should just pretend <laughs> that interviewing Bill Shorten is the same <laughs> as being on the Friendly Geordies podcast <laughs> yeah. and get him cancelled as well. How many it, times it, have you had shit in the with last Kevin week? Rudd. Yeah, you it's started true. off with Warhammer. Yeah, yeah. Ask him about Jack Lang. That could be, Lang, sorry, that could be cool. Yeah, what do you think about Jack Lang? Uh, you know what? I could ask him about that because the other thing that's an uh, interesting tidbit about Bill Shorten, and this is really what I want to s- ask him about because <laughs> this is the thing that I think actually lost him the election. Well, apart from the fact that the entire mainstream media nexus was against him, but I think that the reason that he didn't warm to the public, first off, is because he was surrounded by staffers and mm. I know what staffers do from listening to them. They're always ringing me up going, can you just retract that? Can you can you just get rid of that? Like, can you imagine if your entire life is people, you taking a step and they go, no, 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 no. use your left foot, your left foot. No, just hop on one foot. Oh, that, that looks weird. Uh. Here, here, the only thing that you can do is wear oversized suits. There you go. That doesn't <laughs> look strange. <laughs> Be the guy from fucking talking heads. Yeah, go on. <laughs> I think... What I should be asking him, because I think that what was a real problem with him was that in reality, and I've spoken to the guy on the phone before, mm. he is one of the most engaging dudes you've ever listened to. We- Grabs your attention. He's extremely charismatic. He's extremely nice. He's fun. Seems like a guy that could win an election. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you that's not the Bill Shorten you see on camera. Oh, wait, so you're mm. saying that how he is in personal life is way better. Dude, you know what? It's his stupid fucking advisors. I bet you he exactly. has a nice personality. He's like, Dad, don't talk about that. You're going to lose that one chick in Newtown. Yeah, <laughs> see, I think that's no, it. That's the I greens. really do. That's gone for the Greens already. Labor's given up on Newtown. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. Uh, sorry, I don't know sorry. what they'd be thinking about. Uh, uh, Redfern. No, yeah. Petersham. That, the new t- Newtown is Greens, but sure. there's still that one chick in Petersham. I wonder if Petersham is Greens. Is it? Yeah, that'd be... Well, no, it's not green. It's state greens, but... Right, right, right. Uh, federally, I think that that would fall under Tanya Plibersek's Oh, electorate, okay, so maybe. it is Labor. Yeah, maybe yeah, it's no, Anthony no. Albanese's. Plibersek is like CBD. Yeah, Marrickville. Albanese's. Elba. Elbows, yeah. probably. Um, it's... Uh, Ooh, Marilini imagine is representing asking, those cunts. Does Bill Short... Marilini wants you to ask Bill uh, whether he would free Britney if he was... <laughs> <laughs> That is it. I'm asking him that. Yeah, I was gonna I'm ask. asking him, what do you weigh in on the free Britney debate? Jesus, fair. <laughs> hey. But I think that... Ask him about... Uh, uh, also, the other uh, thing that I didn't know about Bill Shorten, he's a huge history buff. Really? Mm. So I was thinking maybe I should ask him about Jack Lang. Yeah, just ask him about like, you know, hey, don't, don't grill him on policy. I would really like... I, I don't think either. I just want yeah. to be like, tell me about the Eureka Stockade. You know what else as well? Apparently... He has some hairy stories about when he was the AWU leader because... Wait, he was the AUWU leader? I know. I I know that I will mess that up when I speak to him. It just just tell... It. Oh, wait. So he wasn't... Well, well, he was the he was CFMEU leader, right? No, Christ, no. What, what, what was his union? AWU. AWU, okay, AUW, not AUWU. So, yes. because, well, this is the... And this is the other thing. Guys, what do you think about this as a... A title to grab people's attention. I think this interview is going to come out on Friday. I reckon. Friendly Geordies exposes union thug. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) Finally, someone telling it like it is. Actually, here's two (laughs) questions for you. Ask him about Julian Assange. Uh, come on, let's not ask him hairy questions. Yeah. This is the whole thing. The it's guy's been hairy. beaten. And no, done. it is but a bit dude, the hairy. guy is not even in power. If he's not going to say it now, then when the fuck is he going to do dude, it? Dude, he could be Look back. Look at Malcolm. He he's coming power. out every two hours with a new ABC clip saying, like, <laughs> actually, Scott Morrison. He's doing the same thing. He's nuking his party. He could be but back. But that's the thing. But Bill, Kevin Rudd is in the position to do that. Bill Shorten is still an integral member of the Labor Party. Yes, but... Uh, Albanese's position uh, has evolved over Julian Assange. Mm. So it's not a controversial question. Anyways, but you don't have to ask him that. The second question <laughs> was... What about Eureka Stockade? Come on. What is the that again? Is apparently, he's a big history buff. 
Don't you think it'd be great if he started a YouTube channel? I'd watch, watch that in theory. Dude, you didn't vote for him. You'd watch that in theory. Uh, did I vote for him? I can't remember. You did not. Did well, all right. What about a very, very specific version of Antique Roadshow where he walks around to teen <laughs> soldiers and says, I'm pretty sure this is from 1960. <laughs> I'd watch that. Yeah, me Where's too. he from? Victoria? Yeah. Hmm. Ask him about the history of the IPA. What the fuck does that mean? Do you mean Indian Pale Ale? Yeah, what the fuck? Because I can tell you that's history. Ask him if you remember the gig screen, the, the gig scene around Flinders Street. Yeah. What's that? It's a place in Melbourne. Is he from Melbourne? Yeah, I think he is. Yeah, ask him about that. Yeah. Dude, what about the okay, gig scene? I strongly support this. This is not a question. Lucas Forgan says, do the interview as Yilmaz. <laughs> I strongly support that. That could be kind of funny, actually. You'll definitely get more views from that. Poor, poor guy. <sighs> you know what else as well? He'd just sit there and take it. That's the yeah. Really sad no, he'd probably roll he'll, with he'll it. He'd probably roll with roll it. With he'll it. laugh at it. I'm telling you, that's a good idea. I <laughs> think the guy just has shell shock from getting slammed for six years straight. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know what really I, did look, him over? I understand over. how he had it rough, but also now is the time to get over it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, know, but it's kind of like saying to a ask Vietnam him this. vet who has PS. Uh, PTSD saying, uh, yeah, mate, mate, just so you know, you're not in Vietnam anymore. Cured? Cured. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah I yeah. do so that. Some bomb I do sounds. that. All <laughs> these PTSD people. No, you need to get over it. Grab the yeah. fuck up. <laughs> Dude, ask him this. <laughs> say, say to a Vietnam vet, yeah. harden up. Yeah, harden up or kill yourself. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, I'm kidding. I'm Dude, one I'm or the other. Ask him this. Does he regret the moment he the the, the, uh, the moment he lost the election, well, no, eating I mean. eating uh, bunning snag on its side instead of properly. See, there is a reason that I've moved you to watching the project all week. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? You just you're designed for it. <laughs> what do you mean? You like consuming the same media that they're going to sit there and be like, oh, oh, well, that's not how it's done. True, isn't it from the show? But. Are you saying that he did it right? You know why? Uh, he actually made like sausage a really good gate. response. To sausage what did gate. he say? What did he say? He was just saying, look, it was it was like really hot on his hands <laughs> and it was coming out of either side. So he just thought, ah, fuck, okay, I'll just eat it this way. I don't think any human being naturally eats a sausage on its side. And I, I'm going to go further. I really don't think that that is a valid reason for why he shouldn't be prime minister. That's my opinion. That's pretty out there. My rebuttal to that would be, if he can't handle the heat of a sausage, how's he going to handle the heat of the budget? To which I concede. <laughs> <laughs> should have just hired him. That's <laughs> Miss Love is the official... Um, I think Miss Love would actually be better... <laughs> A better advisor. Yeah, a better advisor. I would be. I'd be like, just burn your Referring mouth, dude. Referring to the... <laughs> just burn just, it's not, Wait, it's how was he eating it? So he was just Like a freak. <laughs> also, also, I just need to ask like, before we go... Strangely, on, on the side. Oh, on the, like from the middle. Yeah. I, that, got, yeah. I had a thought the other day. If Labour was ever to change its leader, and I don't think it should, but if it should, don't you think they should change it to make the leader of the Labour Party Hamish Blake? <laughs> Damn. Surely he'd at least win preferred prime minister. Oh, my God. Good I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Andy. Maybe Andy. No, fuck Andy. No, make him the leader of the libs. <laughs> <laughs> he would that be too, would be wouldn't he? He would sketch. be. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. Ryan Shelton, leader of the group. Do you know what I was watching? <laughs> that? <laughs> that looked like third wheel. I don't even, of- don't even know who that is. Fuck. <laughs> Funnily Jesus. enough, I was watching fuck. 60 Minutes with a- Hamish and Andy today. Why? I don't know. It was, it was just there. Algorithm, yeah. It was 60 there. minutes and uh, interviewing what them. I figured How yeah. was your trip to America? Wild or very wild? Well, you didn't need to watch it. That was Yeah, <laughs> that was it. That was it. And Andy's, Andy's great coach is like, we're not looking to be funny. We're looking to have fun. Yeah. Yeah. Sure, sure you Which are. Which is actually yeah. good. But, but the other thing that I kind of understood was that they're not big fans of each other anymore. What do you mean? Like she point blank asked them. Really? Um, are you guys are you guys friends? And then he was like, Yeah, 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 yeah. We're, 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 we're best friends. You know, you know. Obviously, you work together, and there are moments when uh, you know we've been through a lot. Uh, but we're but, but, because if we're not friends, then uh, then the show show is like not good, right, Amish? Yeah, I don't know. 
I have a feeling that they're they're not the best of friends anymore. Just the well, way that, they answer that, that happens. That hap- It makes sense. I mean, well, yeah, it makes sense. It makes but sense. it's just, uh, yeah, you know what? They do have a different vibe now when you listen to their podcast. Do they? Well, that is what happened to American Rosso. If you go back and listen to American Rosso and Triple J, and mm. then you listen to them in the final years of Nova, you can tell <laughs> they despised each other. Really? Yes. Why? Why did they despise each other? Well, I think that I, I remember listening to a podcast about it. I think Merrick's dad died. And he didn't really and Ro- process and that. Rosso did a, no, Rosso did a sketch on it. <laughs> That's why there was a somewhat strained relationship <laughs> because Rosso killed his dad. I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> I'm still on Rosso's side. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna ask is you. Well, what what do, what do they say against Twitch just before we go out? Because I want to. <laughs> That's such a good. Um, what have I got? Someone's just said ask Jesse Bill Searles about for Kevin Rosso. Well, I think that just dude. He definitely does understand the Australian man, which is beers, specifically micro-brewed beers. Yeah. Are mad. And cold chisel can't. But not as much as ACD. <laughs> My saying- one act is Prime Minister. Not enough statues of Angus Young. <laughs> the fuck bon, Scott. bon Scott in Frio. We want one on each side of Frio, like a triangle, the, the fucking Bermuda Triangle of Rock. <laughs> Look, the, the questions I'll just synthesize. Ask him about NIDS. Yeah, let's ask see him it. about um, Kevin Rudd's new essay. Um, look. Yeah, actually, there, I might ask him about Kevin Rudd's new essay. Well, there you go. Do you have any other questions that you are planning on asking him tomorrow? Can you just move that a little bit to the side? Yeah, to your he, side. My head keeps falling out. But yeah, do when we come do back, it? we'll do that. Yeah, yeah. All right, okay, why, why don't we do what do they the think break? about Hamish Blake being Labour leader? Because I actually think that it might... <laughs> I don't know. Okay, what do you guys think? I don't know. Hamish, Tell me. Maybe that is a good way of dealing with the Telegraph. <laughs> Make Hamish... I, I mean, have a feeling that Hamish you know, might turn not everything into a joke. Well, it's the Trumpian method. It works. It could work. I don't Visuals. know. Every time they're taking a photograph of you, yeah, Charlie Chaplin mustache, <laughs> bit of a I probably bow would. Tie. It probably would work because he's just such a nice guy that, like, who even Murdoch couldn't write some like scathing. You know, the worst he could do is be like, "Oh, he's a joker," and then he can just play into it and be like, "Yeah, I am," <laughs> and then like, that's that, I suppose. Then you change the color get out of, of labor. Jail free card of life, isn't it? Change the color of labor. You'll have labor in for a hundred years. All right, why don't we actually, before we go on a break, I'll quickly try to fix the camera and then we'll go on a break so that when we come back, yeah, we'll all do it. Husey instead. Now, there's a good thought. I don't know about all this privatization. I reckon Husey would vote liberal, though. Kyle Sandilands for Labour leader. Now, that's the winner. <laughs> that's a fucked <clears throat> idea. No, all right, what about this? Make him the leader of the Senate. How good would it be? That would be good. Like, no, nothing's getting passed without Judge Coyle. That would be... <laughs> <laughs> He's got a gavel. He's got a gavel. Yeah. Fuck. He's not the speaker. I don't care. Sit down. You're a clown. <laughs> all right. Hey, what happened to you that show? I any of you jokers. What happened to that show? Was that like a, a whopping half a season before it was cancelled? Which is such a travesty because even <laughs> his most ardent critics agreed. Okay. This show is good. Really? Yeah. Why did it get cancelled? Because it was just him sitting there doing... His his entire knowledge of the legal system comes from movies he's seen. Yeah. And so there would be a lawyer sitting next to him advising him what is it is illegal as a judge. He's got (laughs) no idea. Then somebody came in fighting over the ownership of a dog. Yeah. And then he goes, let the dog decide. Puts him down, and then they're just going, you can't do this. There's no way that this holds up. Shut the hell up. Take take the lawyer out of the court. Yeah, let's just yeah, check it right. Well, then it's yours. And obviously the dog is just going to go to the person that it knows the most. So whoever it's been hanging around, because it's probably got a short memory in the last, I'm guessing, six days, it'll just go to that owner. It was cooked units. It was the same story as cooked units. Yeah, it was. You're Let right. Let the dog decide. Now that I think about it's it, he insane. probably was the director of that. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Well, I, I, I'm really upset like i'll be on my deathbed last thought but like why didn't i watch that show me too that will be my last thought <laughs> there's no such thing as the net so i can't find it anywhere no well, we'll be right back all right we'll see you guys after the break <laughs> thank you what accent is the most attractive 
Pakistan. <laughs> ah, you're that teasing is. me, naughty, so naughty. That is a racist. Yeah, fuck yeah, Kata. So, <laughs> welcome don't, to don't the Friendly you. Geordies podcast. Um, you're listening to episode number thirty-three. I'm guessing, actually, now. I'm not sure, but three hundred and thirty. Either way, welcome to the Friendly Geordies podcast. Did you know an interesting fact? Twenty five percent of the people. Uh, there's a mouse in front of my nose. Yeah, <laughs> I don't uh, think that's coming up. It's not coming. Yes, we need your pest kill. Yeah, <laughs> it's all done. Sorry, it's all used. Here's You've done it all. Oh, given the updates on the roaches in your house, they're gone. Thank all you. Of them. Well, pretty much. You haven't seen any. All I've seen, the only ones I've seen, have been dead. Right. Just a couple of corpses. So it and worked. was my theory correct that a couple of your housemates were also dead? <laughs> yeah, well, one of them was dead, yeah. Uh, but that was just coincidence. That was just coincidence. But if one of your housemates was a roach. <laughs> well, was actually paying money. <laughs> and so everybody has to kick in an extra 50 bucks. You didn't think about this. <laughs> well, it's just worth it to avoid all the droppings. Um, ah, really? But, you know, like... Oh, and also... There is another update, I thought and then we'll get onto your big news, Ali. But What's there the is update? even bigger news <laughs> in the share house. Oh, for hell. fuck's sake! What's the big news? We'll talk about that maybe on the pod, shall we? The is this the pod? You mean the upload? Yeah, no, nah, actually. Poll on Twitch. How many people want to hear the update? Yeah, let's from do that. Share yeah, yeah, poll it up. You're not getting this for free. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll get we'll get to that. But yeah, yeah. Did you know an interesting fact, Miss? Mm-hmm. 25% of the people that watch our YouTube videos haven't subscribed. Thieves. So they're thieves. Can't. Unbelievable. <laughs> so well, that, uh, you're I right. hope but subscribe you... subscribe if you're listening. No, no, no. no just, just, just make sure that you subscribe. And also, while we're shouting things out, Friendly Geordies cancels the media, now available in some cities. Uh, that's what, yes. what he shared. Jimmy's on tour, hitting all the cities. Brisbane, Canberra. Maybe Sydney. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but there's a. You can go on to the Facebook page. There is a wide selection of cities that. Uh, well, I'm pretty sure it is Canberra, Brisbane. Yeah, from Toowoomba to Toongabbie. Yep. Well, I mean, you can go. You can travel from Toowoomba to Brisbane. Exactly. That's the deal. Yeah, and uh, it's pretty far still. The hell you want? It's yeah, COVID. You, you enjoy the scenic ride. Yeah. COVID is an issue. It's not an issue. No, especially not in Queensland. I've, I've got nothing here. It's just no, no, no. It, look, out it, of go, sure laziness, go, they will be dropped incrementally throughout. <laughs> so you may as well just check out the Facebook page every day. Yeah, yes. it'll all be on there. It's, like, it's like old times. You remember touring? You remember shows? You remember what it, shows are like? It was the most fun thing ever. Yeah, that was a, that was a crazy de- time, you know? It was, and those times are hopefully going to resume now. Yeah. Albo. When are you going to start strumming on stage? Uh, 20 years. Well, we'll see how we go, I guess. Maybe. Hopefully, <laughs> well, being part of this so. podcast, I think it'll be kind of hard for Miss Love to tour. Why? Within the music industry. But he's open. Oh, wait, because are you are severing your ties? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. But we'll be getting into yeah, that we'll, later. We'll get into that later. That's true. My uh, <laughs> before my chances of touring were destroyed before I could start. <laughs> <laughs> How many people could say that? Yeah, not many. <laughs> All right, look. Here's our first topic for the day. Mm-hmm. There's a new development. The property market has gone berserk. Is it a bubble? Is it going to burst? Is everything going to be worthless? No. Uh, <laughs> Let's talk. <laughs> is that just the same old shit? That's my opinion, but Jordan has a different one. What's my different opinion? You think it's a bubble. It's going to burst. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Nah. Uh, you really shouldn't be taking investment advice from me. What I will say, though, is recently I was having a discussion with a guy from YouTube about the property market. I don't know how I got onto that because I was supposed to be asking you about uh, how I'm supposed to get a bigger audience. <laughs> but as usual, I got sidetracked into housing. And the irony was it was it's to like talk about no property. interest in it. The only thing that I have to say, it's just, just so I can say that because I think that that is pre-COVID, the second most talked about conversation in Australia after How's the Weather. The next piece of uh, big 
safe chat that you can say to anyone in Australia is, what do you think about this bubble, 30% or 40%? And his response was, I understand why there is a housing bubble because, and I never thought of it this way. Who was this cunt? I'm not going to say. Some random. I mean, aren't we all? <laughs> but was he, did you know what he was talking about? Yeah, well, okay, he, okay. well he, he just put in this piece of advice, which is right, that he understands why it's become such an issue and it's because it is just such an easy investment. Mm. I never thought about it before, but he's right. You just hand over a million dollars and then the next day it's worth $3 million and you have a continual stream of $1,000 coming into your bank account for the rest of your life. Occasionally a real estate agent will say, window's broken, do you want to fix it? And then you say no, and then the tenants just have to live with that. That's right, that's how it works. Yes. That's that's one of... <laughs> I'll tell you why the Australian... In my opinion, why the Australian property market keeps growing, and even when it's predicted to burst, it doesn't, it doesn't do that. One reason is... So the reason why we think that there's a bubble is that the prices are growing in an unnatural pace... Well, to give you an idea of how natural it is, a house that we were looking at in Erskineville that sold in October went for $1.25 million. Two weeks ago, it sold for $1.75 million. Yeah. Whoa. So my joke about it being worth $3 million, it probably was accurate. If they sold it on the 29th of October, they would have been $1.5 million richer. Yeah. And it's and nuts. It, well, uh, look, the, during the – after the pandemic, the housing market – sort of uh, deflated about 20%, more so in cities, urban cities, and particularly in uh, close to uh, uh, central business districts. And so it does make sense that the, uh, that the price has gone up because it just it's like a, it goes in a cyclical fashion, right? So that's normal. Um, but here's why I think that Australian property market is really safe. It's because... All of us think it's really safe. That's one of the big factors. So if you look at the American dream, the American dream was you start a business, you can be anyone, and you can succeed and you can become filthy rich. Australian dream is you can own a house. Mm. That's that's what we base our uh, entire... Uh, 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 uh. You can also renovate the house. You can also renovate the house. And not only is that a perception that um, most people in Australia have, which results in anyone that gets some sort of spare money, they go for a second house. In other countries, they might be looking at other kind of investments. Like, for what example, about in Pakistan? Like gold is big over there because, <laughs> because like gold is like a safe bet for them. It's, it's, it's detached from the government. So if they, they think if the government collapses, gold will... Um, will maintain its price. Let's but be honest, they're a week away from changing their currency to US dollars, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> if gold is the major investment of your country. No, there's, there's other... There's property rice. property is huge over there too, by the way. Property, property is, is big huge everywhere. everywhere. But so here's, here's the thing. Why, here's why I think Australian property market keeps... remains steady. That's one of the things that the Australian dream is owning a house, which means that the general perception amongst every Australian is that property is safe. Hence, they keep investing in it even in times of downturn, which remains the uh, which keeps the price somewhat steady. The second aspect is that even though the population seems to be stagnant, which usually means that every kind of bubble will uh, will deflate, but Australia keeps getting a steady inflow of migrants. The migrants. The increases the demand, so the supply has to keep up with it. The other aspect is the urbanization. So even if you're not getting people from China and India buying stuff, you still have people moving from different parts of Australia towards city centers. And so that keeps driving up the demand as well. And lastly, and the most important factor, which I think even in terms of like horrible crisis will keep the property market steady, are social network like you know how the u.s whenever they're facing some kind of depression they're like ah, how about we build 100 more tanks we do that with our construction and builders like mm. the first <laughs> thing we did during the pandemic was how about everyone gets fifty thousand dollars to renovate their house it's because the uh, the housing market or the housing building market is an extremely protected um labor sector in australia so even well let's be honest that was really just a pork barrel 
It might have been a pork barrel, but there's a reason why they chose that to be the pork barrel because it. But you could have used Labor's alternative of buying of building public housing. You could, but then that's that still would construction. Not, that's still construction, but that's not going to make uh, all the rich people happy. So there's yeah. a re- reason yes. why they do it. But the the, of the, the, the point you know that to to uh, sign up for home builder, you had to have a minimum of a hundred and twenty five thousand dollars a year coming into your bank account. Meaning that it really was targeted at those who struggle the most in a pandemic, lawyers and plumbers. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Actually, that's our second segment of how we can talk. We need to talk about like some wage growth issues over there, too. But essentially, that those are my points of why I think the housing bubble exists. And even if it depreciates, it will go down again like it did before, but it's going to depreciate by another 10, 15 percent. Um, the demand remains really stable. The supply is also stable because we've just got more room. Well, it's also because we are building apartments like mad. And so you can, I didn't realise this, but the Australian dream has kind of morphed into the Singaporean dream Mm. where I don't think anyone can afford a house. Isn't this insane? All right, not to toot my own horn, but of our generation... There's no way to not say this is about two year own horn, but come on. <laughs> I'd have to be one of the biggest celebrities of Gen Y because there are none as they weren't propped up by a mainstream media nexus. So it's just pretty much just me and Lewis Spears, right? That's that's who you've got. And then you obviously have a few international acts from music that have gone off to Hollywood and they do really constructive things for the economy like play GTA five, six months of the year. Hell yeah. Uh, but... I was just thinking about that, and now that I'm looking for a house, I've noticed that I'm going to areas that have always been considered lower middle class. Mm -hmm. And you go to these open houses, you know who's there? It's couples that you can tell both of them are high roller professionals. It's a few Chinese investors, and it's really laggard families that have called in a lot of favours from their parents plus <laughs> their incomes combined. Yeah. And every time I see their faces, I think, mm, yeah, you waited to the last egg in your womb <laughs> to have a kid, didn't no. you? No. And they're yeah. struggling to get a family home. It's kind <sighs> of- I really, when people say that uh, over 50% of our population will never own a house, I used to think that's where you're wrong because Miss Love owned a house. <laughs> Sucked in. Are you, why have you turned into Banksy? I don't know. Just going for it. I'm still grossed out by the egg comment. Egg comment? Egg. Oh, yes. Remember I that? I still thinking about cockroach eggs. Uh, now I'm going to have to leave it on for an hour. <laughs> yeah, the fact that I could get a house. Yeah, is, eggs, don't you? Yeah, it means that housing is affordable as long as you're willing you live in to Lithgow. move very far yeah. away from and even all then, your friends and family. Yeah, and even then, you know, it was exactly that situation you said of like scrounging us, scrounging together, together as m- all of our savings and having to borrow money from our parents. And then it was like, yes, we've just done it. We've got a mortgage for a. Not big house four hours out of Sydney, but there's some back, there's a backyard. It's, it's grass. Can you see it? I can see it. it it's green, isn't it? Isn't it? But the, did you lose <laughs> money on it? Well, that's a different story. I, I got bought out, but I didn't lose money. Yeah, no. you did. Because it... I made money on it. Yeah, you... Not much. <laughs> a lot of people have <laughs> because recently I pulled out. made... But here's another... Sorry, one last thing of why <coughs> housing property keeps going up. And this is a problem that's not just Australian. This is a global issue. The amount of savings that we are do that we are collecting as a society not the poorest the poor the, the poorer you are the less savings you get but the richer you are you're not looking to invest into productivity or any kind of thing like you're not willing to invest in a business what you're willing to do with a lot of your savings is buy shares essentially if you're a company the way you invest is you buy your own stocks which is a horrible way to invest for productivity so all the money that people are saving is being parked into um, things like property and stocks. So there's yeah. almost an infinite demand because high rollers are looking to buy the, the amount of apartments that they made. The, the assumption, I remember in 2015 when they had upstaged the amount of apartments that they were going to make, 
the assumption was, or this was being pitched to us, is that, look, the, the prices are really high because there's Im- immense amounts of demand. So we're just going to flood the market with a lot of supply, and that's going to bring the property down. The apartments ended up getting made, but the prices never got down because there were plenty of people willing to buy up that property. Mm. So it's not that there's 22 million people. If there's 40 million houses, the price is going to become half because there's uh, that's mm. half. It's like it if there's stays. 20 million people, they'll buy 40 million houses. They'll buy 60 million houses because it's not actually 20 million people that are buy- buying those houses. It's actually a million people that have a lot of money that they don't know what to do with. And it's a thousand people that are purchasing a thousand properties. Yeah. Because this is the other factor that I learned from Prosper Australia. They're a great institution. They've been around since 1901, I think, and they're constantly looking into property prices. And you know how they've stayed afloat? They don't even ask for donations anymore. It's just they understand the property market so well that they just keep recycling investments in property to make sure that they can keep pumping out. Honestly, the best research there is uh, when it comes to housing. They're obsessed with it, and they really know how it works. And... They were saying that in Melbourne and Sydney, there are suburbs where up to 20% of the properties are deliberately left vacant. What they're doing is turning property where people live (coughs) into diamonds. They are making them artificially scarce to increase the price. And so you're right. Even if there was 80 million houses in Australia, yeah, they'd buy 60 million. They'll get bought up. Very cheeky. And so that's naughty, yeah. isn't it? But there's the yes. but the question still remains. Like the, the the issue still remains. A lot of people still can't buy properties, even with a market that's being flooded with new properties. Man, I don't understand how there's this business mogul here that, did. that bought it. <laughs> you got to move to Lithgow, mogul, dude. And you've got to have how an is there income a stock in market king, dude, and a high property developer <laughs> roller on this podcast. Look at this dude. turn into domain.com. <laughs> <laughs> Look for me, all the keyholes lined up for a millisecond in my life and by a pure chance i fell into that but that's but even that's hard to do so if you think about it look let's say there's about lucky me there's about like well, uh, two hundred thousand people currently looking to buy a house in sydney they can't afford to get a house so let if they try to pull out pull off a mislove <laughs> what they need to do is not a only do they need to move to like uh, a city or a town that's like two hours away or two and a half hours away, they also need to have steady income in that low density population area to sustain their mortgage. Mm. So mislove had an uh, had a situation had where he had a restaurant that he was running. He literally went there and set up a restaurant and started to run it. For a lot of people they that can't. have jobs around here. They can try to do it with this new COVID stuff. It's going to make it easier if they can work remotely. But the biggest barrier still remains that my work is in the city. I cannot afford a house in the city. My income is not uh, rising uh, at the same rate as inflation. So I progressively keep getting poorer. But my options in regional areas also shrink at the same time. Yeah. So mm. I'm in a shit cookie. Mm, mm, um, mm. And that's a lot of the people that are trying their best to buy a house in Sydney and they end up moving to like some shitty apartment in Homebush or they like buy a house in Penrith, which is like an hour and a half. And they just like live that US style life where they travel yeah. to our. I know people that used to work at Dan Murphy's um, who travel <laughs> every out. day for three hours from Central Coast. The only way for them to own a property. But here's the thing. Here's the fallacy that... It's not the fallacy, but the the culture that Australia has, they are still willing to do that because owning a property is really, really important. Actually, that's the attitude that keeps the investors happy because the investors can do whatever they want. They can buy a property. They can keep it vacant. But without the Australian population having this like unshakable faith in housing, they won't be able to sustain their position either. Mm. Because mm. they're backed up with a lot of dummies like us that are. Yeah. Really but wasn't this all like started it's by right. Howard? Isn't that? Is it because it's not? It's this is a bit by, by design, right? I think. Look, I yeah, know. you can look at the graph. So it is by design. Well, as soon as he halved capital gains, you can see the chart. Yeah, it goes half capital gains, <laughs> and the reason mm. is is once you have halved capital gains, you have turned Australian housing into. One of the safest investments on earth, and especially with opening up foreign investment, anyone can buy it. 
They can buy huge quantities of it. And if you don't have to pay any tax when you sell it, where's the downside? Yeah. It just keeps doubling, I think, every two months, <laughs> something like that. I, there was a stat that I was reading recently that said that <laughs> in the 90s, a house was, I think, five times the average wage, the average annual wage. Yeah. Now it's 20 times the average. That's what I'm saying. Like, that's what I don't understand. What was his motivation to do that? Well, like a, a sudden bump because in investment? Because the Liberals, one of their major donors is the property investing firms. Here, let's, let's so look. Let, let, no me, let me give you vision. some stats on this, right? So in, oh, the, yeah, last, in the last month, <laughs> just one month, the property price in Sydney has gone up 2.5%, Melbourne 2.1%, and Brisbane 1.5%. This is just one month. If Jeez, you look at the quarter- This is domain.com. If we just all had smiles on our face right yeah. now, there's no difference between those podcasts. <laughs> yeah. They give you the exact same information and say, and that's why Tasmania is a hot spot. No, it's, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm trying to make a different point over here. So uh, the median fine. value, the median value of Sydney housing is $895,000, right? This is not the average house. This is the median house. The average house is close to $1.3 million. In Sydney? Yes. Yeah. Do you know what that stat is showing us? So median is when, it, let's say you've got 10 total houses, the median is the middle point. So let's, there'll be like, uh, it'll be like at the fifth point. So it'll be like 5.5. Average is that they collect the total number of houses and they divide by however number of houses it was. So average is 895,000, whereas median is 1.2. That's showing immense amounts of inequality because technically in a somewhat ideal society, your median value of a house should be equivalent to your average income. Mm. But there is close to a $500,000 difference over there. What that's showing us is that people that are buying houses for a lot for for a much higher price like 1.52 million are owning most of the houses mm -hmm. and people that are owning cheaper houses are actually a lot less in number because and the, the lower you go then those people are not even in the property market anyways what i'm saying is that within the last month the, it's increased by 3.5% means that inequality is also increased by about 1.5% it's going insane. Here's the other thing that I uh, recently learned Damn. about. Um, JobKeeper, right? JobKeeper, all the money that um, companies were getting for uh, JobKeeper. So usually what, what, what happened was during the first few weeks of uh, this crisis, a lot of companies genuinely didn't know how they were going to pay a lot of these employees. So hence they started getting job seeker. Job seeker was a six month deal that initially a six month deal that they were going to get, which was if you qualify for it initially, then just for six months, every employee of yours, you're going to get $750, not the employees, the business is going to get $750. What ended up happening was within a few weeks, all of these businesses became profitable again. So what they, so they could afford the salaries, but they obviously kept getting their money for six months and for some businesses a year. They used all of that money to buy back their own shares. Mm, mm. And so- You're when, talking about big corporations. I'm talking about yeah. big corporations. Yeah. So the share market went berserk mm. in a time when we were in a pandemic, mm. flooded by taxpayer mm. money, which, which does increase inflation, but the inflation will only matter to the little person that got their initial salary because their value of money is going to be less. You know, All they of think these that up to 8% of small businesses will be destroyed as a result of JobKeeper. So much really? for the party of small business. That was by design. I was looking at the big picture. I've got a big video coming out about COVID. It is very cleverly entitled, COVID. They common. were talking about uh, the, the, a huge portion of it is unpacking what you're discussing here. And if you look at the wider context of what was happening there, they had the recipe of Rudd. They could have handled COVID exactly the same way that Kevin Rudd handled the global financial crisis. In fact, if you look at the stats now, there's a bunch of European nations, New Zealand, most developed countries just copied what Kevin Rudd did in the global financial crisis. And as a result, they have much stronger economies. You saw bounce backs that were insane. You saw... Countries that would plunge maybe 11% in 
in GDP in one quarter, and then the next quarter they jumped back by 15%. So there was no recession there. Australia is having one of the worst recessions it's ever had, clearly by design, because the Liberals intentionally put in job keepers. So they, the, the party that loves to cut red tape created the biggest nexus of government slash corporate bureaucracy in Australian history by giving this money out to employers that they will dole out to their employees, but also with the guys that it's going to take a month for all of these things to be determined and cleared when you could have just pumped it straight into everybody's wallets and and, and a lot less as well. And Mm. it would have been much better for the economy because that's exactly what you need in a credit crunch. You need lots of money pumped in really quickly from people that need to spend it. Yeah. You do not give this money out to corporations that can cushion the fall. And then all the small businesses, businesses, they they couldn't keep afloat for a month Mm. paying their employers. So a lot of them went belly up. Why did they want them to go belly up? Because the larger corporations that inhabit that sector... Jesus. My bad. Now that was a classic mislove moment mixed with a classic Ali yeah. moment. And that what do you, you get? banging on Brilliant the bloody table, mate. Wait, what, why is this my <laughs> one? But mixed with, yeah, classic Geordies. Yeah. Smashing on, keep going, keep going. But keep going, sorry, yeah. Yeah, that's a fine moment of history right there. <laughs> um, <sighs> but, you, but you know what, in hindsight, in hindsight, I'm going to admit this, that I did not have the foresight at the time, but in hindsight, I 100% agree with you. One of the well, I didn't. It's, this is the whole yeah. thing. When you go back and look at this all, everything that they constructed, both with uh, the Reserve Bank and with their own fiscal policies, which everybody always says, yeah, but they're different. Yeah, like the ABC is independent, as is the Reserve Bank. Mm. The governor is appointed by the treasurer. Who's the treasurer? You know? But what, was the, what were they doing? They were allowing banks credit 8% of the GDP. So they just invented 8% of money to give out to banks – and they basically job keepered that 8% of GDP to the major banks, these ones that they said that they punish after the Banking Royal Commission, their punishment was to give them unlimited money and to do whatever they want with it. What do you think banks want to do with it? They want to give it out to major corporations because they know major corporations will be able to pay it back, and this was very, very cheap credit. So major corporations thought, okay, our entire... The the smaller businesses that we were competing with are completely crippled. They are those cockroaches in Miss Love's house. That was Scott Morrison's economic... Act in a nutshell. It was just <laughs> sprinkling bagorn amongst the small business cockroaches. And that allowed the giants to just sit there and go, okay, well, we have total market dominance in this situation. We have no competition. We have unlimited cheap credit. Uh, the taxpayer is paying for our most e- largest expense, which is labor. We are, we are going into debt for generations just so they don't have to pay their employees for a year. Yeah. And then they used all of that, those huge quantities of money to just absolutely ransack anyone that was smaller than them to take to gain even more market dominance. It and was a beautiful... It was that same thing of just, you know, never waste a crisis. Well, the Liberals don't waste a crisis. Mm. It's just that they don't waste a crisis for their donors. So there was no one month waiting for the big, for the big companies. Hmm? No, there was one month waiting oh, for the big companies, it. but they, they can afford, afford that. It, they right. can afford to wait out for not what, only, seventy years. Not only years? can they afford it, but those big companies <laughs> knew that they were going to get those checks eventually because they were the reasons why your know, people <laughs> yes. were in the first. So they knew yeah. that. Second thing, banks, <laughs> banks with all that big ass are willing to give trading. them are willing to give big corporations money not because they can pay it back. Often, if you think about big corporations, do you know like Uber has never turned a single uh, dollar of profit but they would get any amount of debt that they want because their debt by Bullshit. banks is seen more. Yeah, never, yeah. They, because they don't want to pay taxes. So they're propped up. So they, they keep, they keep, uh, they keep, um, uh, they keep buying other kind of businesses. They keep fake investing in their businesses so that they can keep their expenses high and never pay tax. So on paper, they've never made a profit, whereas their executives get bonuses that would, you know, dwarf 20 years of your salary in a single right. year. And that and banks keep giving them profit, even though banks know that maybe they might not be able, they might not be even able to pay them back. But it's still considered good lending because they are too big to fail, mm. kind of thing. Yeah, mm. it's like didn't Trump get a similar treatment when he's in his time? He would, he was bank. Well, he went bankrupt, right? And they were just like, yeah, look, you got to. Your voice yeah. sounds funny, so we'll but give you a bankruptcy laws in the U.S. are That's actually pretty, pretty yeah. cool. Like U.S. is the best place to be bankrupt. 
Basically, <laughs> if you go bankrupt, what's that chapter or something that they file? You're rewarded. You, not only are you rewarded, but like everything prior to that, gone. Yeah. You clean start slate, from free, a, man. a clean, clean slate. So all your debts are now gone as because you filed for bankruptcy. Really? That is not the case in Australia. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, yeah, right. If I was in America, I would just file for bankruptcy tomorrow and then I wouldn't have to pay back my hex. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you wouldn't. Fuck. I've still got to pay Actually, mine Actually, you know back. what's funnily enough? Fuck. Weirdly, student oh, yeah, loans no, are the only right, ones that you still right. have to pay for. What? What? Student loans are the only ones that you still have to pay this for in the ridiculous, US. This is ridiculous. Oh, true. are you yeah. kidding? Yeah. Insane. Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, insane. But the other thing that Are we also found out after me? these pen, uh, pandemic job keeper payments is that if you are poor or if you're not like a rich guy, any money, any stimulus money that you're going to get, you're going to spend into in the economy as soon as yeah, possible. If you're, if you're really rich, if you're a company that keeps receiving $750 times every employee that you have for one year, you are not spending that money in the economy. You are just buying shares. Mm. Yeah. So th- th- I, do not underestimate this point of yours of why Kevin Rudd's strategy was way better because that's the only proven way for us to actually stimulate the economy. Yep. Because every time you pay big corporations, yeah. they never do. They mm. have no incentive to. They already mm. have a lot of savings. Mm. It's not that they didn't have money. Their entire agenda is that their shareholders stay happy, which means that they need to keep giving them some sort of dividends. So they keep investing whatever amounts of profits they make on the back of their employees for their own share so that, you know, the, the fucking price remains stable. Yep. It's criminal, actually. They you don't just, hire people, do they? Well, they won't. They, they won't hire people because of any kind of stimulus. If they need yeah. to hire people, they'll hire people. But they're constantly thinking of how to lay off people. The entire yeah. idea is efficiency and reducing amounts of it, the, the number of employees that you have. It's pretty wild. So yeah, I'm basically, it is I can't wild. believe I can't believe I'm saying this, but. Jordan, you're right. The pandemic <laughs> economic strategy was a failure. <laughs> <laughs> what a controversial statement on this pod. But now I know All you need to know true. is, and I've always used this as the go-to silver bullet. Anytime you're ever arguing with anyone that says that the Liberals are better for the economy, always point out OECD, Labor, number one in the world. Best economic managers in the OECD, which is pretty much just the developed world. Scott Morrison, currently sitting around, I think, 34th. We fell down 33 places from first place when we were in, given a huge economic head start because we were the only country that had a sti- uh, Kevin Rudd stimulus package because, I don't know, Kevin Rudd PM doesn't air in Luxembourg. So they didn't know what was going through that brilliant man's mind. And even with that massive head start, even with being one of the only country, I think we were the only country in the world that didn't go into recession, we are now in one of the worst recessions, no, sorry, the worst recession in our nation's history. From there to there in the span of seven years, you can only get to that position through gross economic mismanagement, and I will go further, deliberate destruction of the economy. And the worst thing is we're Mm. probably going to stay here for a bit. Yeah. Because now there's no, I don't see any... Unless the government, and sorry, I'm going to say it because I think it matters over here. Unless the Australian government rethinks its China strategy, I don't think there's any way out of, we can't go back to 2013. Well, this is the other argument that everybody says is, is that because of China? Yes, Kevin Rudd uh, just fluked being best economic manager on earth like Michael Jordan <laughs> fluked being best basketball player in the NBA. There was no skill involved in that whatsoever. It was purely the saving grace of China. I'm talking about Michael Jordan, by the way. The China put him there. But, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, Kevin Rudd, even if you're going to believe the Australian talking point that it was China that got us out of the global financial crisis... Who would you prefer at the helm? The guy that can speak Mandarin or the guy that is going out of his way to antagonise that country that's supposed to save us or invade us, depending on whatever narrative you need to follow for that day. Isn't that incredible? The same people that say China saved us in the global financial crisis are the same people now saying China's about to invade us. Mm. Hmm. It just depends on whatever the Australian says. That's their opinion. Kevin Rudd was not just good because he managed the economy. He did some really visionary stuff, in my opinion, which I don't think a lot of people give a lot of importance to. But he was instrumental in basically trying to convince China 
to join the mainstream. He, he, he encouraged them to join the East Asian Council, I think, which was China's initial strategy was like, no, nah, this is too dominated by the US. We're not going to join it. And they were in opposition. It was Kevin Rudd's intense lobbying for them to join it because Kevin Rudd's opinion was you're going to have to give these guys space. Yeah. And you you need to you need to attract well them a, where like yeah. we are able to influence their decision making. If you isolate them, then they're going to do stuff without asking you. So he was so instrumental in mainstreaming China to a certain point where like China so like all of this animosity that we're having now, it could have happened 3 4 years before. Had because it took a bit of time for China to lose Australia's trust and for Australia to lose China's trust. And Kevin Rudd was instrumental in building that trust, which yep. I think is the way of the future. Like in the next fifty years, we're gonna have to give them space somehow. It's better that we do it on our own terms, where we have some say in it, so we mm-hmm. can convince them that you know this rules based order that we keep talking about. We can actually convince them on that rules based order. Mm. If we keep isolating them, then they're gonna be running shit. It's just that we're and gonna also have zero isolating ourselves, it. isolating ourselves. Uh, Paul Keating had a really good point where um, when he was asked, um, uh, "What do you think about uh, the U.S. getting angry at us if we if we keep appeasing China?" and Paul Keating was saying, "Like, hey, we we fought a war with with the U.S. Well, we, alongside the U.S. a hundred years ago. Do you think we have to bring out our marriage certificate every year?" <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so true. Marriage certificate. Yeah, that's what the that's what the Liberal Party says. Like, <laughs> uh, don't leave us the ancestry, mate. They're not leaving you, mate. So what are you doing? You're embarrassing yourself. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, a lot I of highly recommend sense. anybody who's anti-China go out and watch that YouTube talk. I can't remember what it is. Just type in Paul Keating China. Uh, yeah, it's. I think uh, he makes some very salient points. It is. Um, <laughs> Latrobe University lecture uh, from 2017 with Paul Keating, but anyways, okay, that was that is not very esoteric specific knowledge at all. <laughs> <laughs> that was, I listened to it today. All right, so that was that for the housing prices. You. Now there's an even bigger issue, Did which you? is the hashtag butt slav is trending. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I think I gave a bit of a preview to my OnlyFans when I was cleaning up. You're welcome. Preview to OnlyFans when you were cleaning up. No further into that. And what happened to the poll? I mean, Did like everybody I sh- want... I mooned everyone, dude, when I was cleaning this shit. Ah, uh, yes. Mm. The notorious plumber's crack. That's the one. Uh, tell mm. us more. That's all I got. About, I no, no, about the Cluedo whodunit mystery that has engulfed your house. Uh, are you talking about the incident? I think you know I am. We'll do I that. Think you're stalling for time. No, but I, I've decided. Well, I'm, 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 I'm intentionally stalling for time. You want to hear it? Shine up, bitches. This is a really <laughs> key point of this podcast: grilling Miss Love. Yeah. <laughs> this cockroach situation. <laughs> No, no, that's going to be He would do late. so well in BBC Hard Talk. He's just had years of training for it. <laughs> just being like, I don't understand the question. No, I don't understand the premise. No, I don't have to answer that. No, no, no. But you're dodging the question. There's a bigger question over here. Lady Gaga's dogs are stolen and no one seems to give a fuck. Yeah? Yeah. Dude, this is crazy. I saw Her the footage. Dog walker. Ow. You saw it. I saw There's it at footage. the gym. Footage. Dude, her dog walker got shot. <laughs> Someone came. They said, "Give me Lady Gaga's dogs," and her dog walker was like, "No." So they shot him point blank in the chest and took chest? the chest. Yes, I saw the footage. But it was dark. I didn't see a chest. It was Did he chest. die? No, he apparently Holy they're saying he he'll, he'll survive. He could still die, but they're saying to survive. But. For Lady Gaga's French bulldogs. It's because they're worth a lot of money, apparently, those particular ones. They're like, I don't know, a million. Are they blue? It's fucking ridiculous. Yeah, they're one of those sort of like, you know. Show me a picture of Lady Gaga's dogs. I want to see. You, you, you can get I that. I bet you it looks exactly the same as my French they bulldog. They do. You can't tell. They literally do look the same. Right. Price? Priceless. <laughs> Shooting someone in the chest? Priceless. <laughs> MasterCard helps you kill people for money. There are some things money can't buy, and for those things, there's guns. <laughs> well, there How is that worth a billion dollars? I don't know. Well, she, those she, French Bulldogs are way uglier than mine. She, um, uh, there's some very rare ones or something, but yeah, Nash, of course, she's like, anyone that can give, 
which can, that can return them five thousand uh, dollars. No, a million, a million each. But like, funnily enough, she I don't think See, she gave shit you know to the dog walker the... that got shot. Really? Yes, that, that's so true. It's such you know where you are on the totem pole as soon as you're in a relationship. Women love dogs more than they love people. Yeah. Um, yes. And actually, I will include myself as a woman. Yeah, no, let's be too. honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But Not just dogs, like fish as well. Any animal. Yeah. <laughs> Cicadas. It's so sad, though. I bet you that guy gets fired as well. Oh, because oh, you can't he walk he the dog. Up. Yeah, she did true. call him a hero, but I didn't hear about any monetary prize for the guy. Yeah, well, America calls their vets heroes too. They don't pay for <laughs> yeah. them. Yeah, true. The funny thing is too, like, apparently she was all like, I know what they're trying to do here. They're trying to take the dogs for ransom because they know they can sell them either for a lot of money or get a lot from the ransom. Well, I will not works. be. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Like, I will not be giving in to these demands. On a different note, anyone that can get the dogs back gets a million dollars for each dog. It's like, dude. Dude, she's doing it. So if you are the hijacker, just get your friend to go, I got this terrible, gonna, terrible man. <laughs> they're going to do that. Yeah. I'm sure they're going to do that. Yeah. But anyway, I don't and know. And I bet you Lady Gaga will know and still give the million dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> dude, that uh, actually, here's another thing that I didn't tell you guys. Did I tell you? You would tap Lady Gaga. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A Star is Born, Lady Gaga, yes. Lady Gaga uh, <laughs> on stage, no. I had to watch that. Lady Gaga interviewing Julian Assange, yay. What? Whoa, did she? That's Pamela Anderson. Did that happen? And so did she. What? And to which I'd say, no. <laughs> <laughs> what? Did those things Echo happen? Echo Schleck. Did that happen? Yeah. Yeah, they did. Lady why? Gaga loves Julian Assange. Uh, fair you know enough. why? Because I think that Lady Gaga is one of the only Hollywood celebrities that I think is intelligent. Fair. She, wow. Well, she's the rest of them are pretty dumb. Yeah, As in, did, I feel yeah. sorry for Britney. Hashtag free Britney, but <laughs> she's a bit of a ditz. Isn't she? <laughs> well, I don't think gonna, that, you know what? I, I will say side. this about it. It's just so hilarious watching that and just seeing all of these freaks parading around a court saying, free Britney. Why are you such a free. contrarian? What? You spend your entire life pre this documentary defending Britney, thinking that she's the most amazing person. And as soon as you figure mm -hmm. out that there's actually a legion of fans True. that do the same thing, you're like, nah, fuck Britney. Love Justin Timberlake. Ah, you got me. <laughs> Far out. Nah, you're that, that is my personality. I can't oh, true, argue yeah. with it. The contrarian. You're right. Look, no, I, I don't like Justin Timberlake because that was the most cucked apology I've ever heard in my life. But <laughs> uh, I haven't seen it. Uh, I haven't seen Honestly, him. I don't Honestly, care enough did. about him, you know? But he's a musician. <laughs> <laughs> the most controversial thing said all night. It is. Uh, no, that's contrarian. But do you consider him a musician? No, I fucking don't, dude. But he does use his voice as an yeah, instrument. He goes, <laughs> yeah, he does that. I suppose that's a musician. Well, that was just like when I did Spanion. That, when you did that, <laughs> that reset my mind and I hope you do it more in the future. <laughs> well, okay. In fact, I know that we've got a lot of music checklists that we're still waiting for. And in Miss Love's style, he will deliver on them. It will just take half a decade. But, but I'll get there. Adult contemporary, followed by you doing a cover of Justin Timberlake. No one wants to hear. Oh. Come on, okay. who doesn't want to hear that? Does I anyone want to hear, hear that? This can't be summer love, Fuck. baby. Fuck. I want to hear that. Biggest ah. wuss on earth. <laughs> what? Because Biggest wuss on earth. Oh, it's got to be. Got to be. It, uh, yeah. Yeah. Taking that 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 uh that you know award for sure. The other thing is that's amazing about that documentary is when you look at it, even though they're trying really, really hard to make it look like Britney Spears is trapped under a conservatorship, when you even though that's happening and they're explaining the facts, you think I'm pretty sure she wants to be under conservatorship. Really? I don't, like, she's not coming out and saying anything. Everyone's just reading into Instagram posts saying, ooh, she posted a window. That's a symbol of freedom. Well, this is what happens when you start a podcast specifically on Britney Spears' Instagram posts. They're not that deep. You've got an hour to fill a week. Wait a sec, that's a thing? Yes. Imagine we being got, Why that, are you listening to this? Imagine being that big. That your the, the intricacies of your life spark industries. Now nah, you don't need to be that big. You just need to be like that crazy. You uh, the I think Britney. That's insane. Did Britney <laughs> ever? Did she have a period where she had like positive media attention on her? Very very briefly, 
I think when she released Oops, I Did It Again, but then that quickly turned into You're a Bad Influence for Children. But that was, I hate how everyone's just sitting there being saying that she was flut shaped. I'm pretty sure that just happened to everyone. Surely that happened to Fred Durst. Surely that happened to Linkin Park. Yeah. You know what also happened to Fred Durst? Britney Spears. Yeah. <laughs> How sick is it that the yeah, Durst Master yeah. got in there? Yeah, of course. <laughs> of course he did. And most likely, Mrs. Aguilera, come and get some. <laughs> oh, no. Which way to go? <laughs> it's so perfect that that guy had sex with everybody's idols as a kid. I know, I know. <laughs> that man that, ruins everything, doesn't he? <laughs> such, a, such a weird period of time where he was the height of cool. <laughs> When was that? But also, 1999 to 2001? Boy. 1999 to 2002. Two. Yeah, yeah, 2002. Yeah, yeah. No, 97 to 2002, I'm going to say. Okay. Well, What's that, five that years? Sh- it is strange. I will say that Britney yeah. Spears would have had to be the biggest entertainment act in, of that era, without question. She'd be the closest thing to Michael Jackson. Who? Fred Durst is worth a third of her. Surely Fred Durst wasn't that big. He had to Fred share Durst it with the rest of the Fred did not guys. have a hundred paparazzis following, actively trying to make her go insane and working. You know that Black Mirror episode where they're constantly following someone around with a camera and people are coming to kill them and then people Jesus. enjoy that and film it more? Oh, God. I haven't seen that. I will one. say this. I do feel sorry for Britney Spears in that. I was always of the opinion that, man, shut the fuck up, people that complain about being famous. You asked for that shit. But I think after a while, maybe two days, three days, a hundred paparazzi constantly following you, swearing at you, throwing things at you like you're an animal in a 1930 zoo, <laughs> constantly poking you. I think at some point it would get tiring. No, and I think at some point you would shave your head. Yeah. <laughs> no, and no, Miss Love knows the experience. Yeah, He's there. Just stay away. I do not blame her a single bit for going insane. That sort of attention would be like horrible for anyone. Yeah. Mm. And and no one is thinking of you. Not a single soul thinks of you in a positive way. No, they just see you as an amusing spectacle. Yeah. It's very it's a very strange telling sign of like the human. You know what psyche. is ironic though? Those hundred people constantly following her, trying to turn her into an amusing spectacle, did turn her into an amusing mm-hmm. spectacle. True. It truly is one of the greatest examples of the fact that the secret works because most of her life was walking around <laughs> like, y'all want to get Burger King? That's not that interesting. <laughs> so they made it interesting. Yeah. Do Jeez. people, people can be like, fans can be really weird. I I wouldn't be surprised if you were like having a heart attack on stage and you were like, hey guys, someone call an ambulance. I'm having a heart attack. And they'd be like, but do the line first. Yeah. That has happened to someone in the past. Have what? you seen that footage? I can't no. remember who the actor was. I think he was in Britain. He had a heart attack on stage. What? And everyone was laughing. Oh. And thought it was part of the act. Oh, no. Well, that was a reasonable mistake. And he died. Oh. Are you fucking serious? Yeah. But well, that is I very unfortunate this. because no, he's I a comedian. That is really fortunate. Like you, I would. I be, would kind of want to die that way. On like die on the road, doing what you love. Is that it? Is it right in the middle of it? And <laughs> as you're going out, but would you be a thousand people? Of course, you, <laughs> of course would you, you would. Be the happy? best way to go. <laughs> but would you be happy or disappointed if the if the venue you die, died at was in Toowoomba? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I'd be really happy if it was Toowoomba. No, no, no. You'd only be happy if it was Toowoomba if, if like, as you were dying, they're like, you just, like, you know, haul your, like, dying body up to the counter and, like, one steak, please. And then they just shovel a burnt to a crisp steak in your mouth and you suffocate that on that while you're having the heart attack. Just like, yes, true, true, true. (laughs) And while I'm trying to chew it, my teeth are breaking. Yeah, (sighs) yeah. (sighs) Just the best of both worlds. Won't be needing these anymore. (laughs) And that would be your final meal, wouldn't it? If someone's like, you can have anything in the world, I'd be like, I want a fucking Toowoomba steak that tastes like a shoe. You would want Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. You better get that Indonesian lady that used to work at Sizzlers to do it. I yes. just want her to have a job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it would happen that way. Are all Sizzlers closed down? Toowoomba's gone. To- Apparently Toowoomba's Which gone. Which is like, what the hell are we going to do there now? I don't even well, know. it's time. <laughs> it's time. <laughs> I don't it's know. We'll go to Bob Jane T. Martin chew on the tires. We'll yeah, the yeah, yes, there'll yes. be less wood in the fucking tire. Yeah, true. Wood chips. 
That has haunted you, hasn't it? Oh, dude, hasn't it haunted you? Uh, Not no, so I haven't much. thought about it since. But no. that's because if somebody did offer me wood chips, I'd just happily eat. True, it. that's fair. You you In enjoyed fact, that's it. the only thing that I'm annoyed at is you, that can't you eat don't cook chips. those for lunch. <laughs> now, well, I'll do whatever you want. Do what you want. Here's the thing. I have either we can go on to the submarine segment. There's a lot of fucked up shit in there. Or I listened to the Joe Rogan podcast and there was an evolutionary biologist on it and he brought a theory of why we think certain women are hot and certain women are beautiful. Do you want to hear that instead? I'm pretty sure I've already heard it, but play on. (laughs) And I'm going to the toilet. What? Speaking of hot. Yeah. All right, Miss. Okay, I guess I'll explain it to Miss Love again. But I can't remember the guy's name, but he's like really good friends with Sam Harris. And mm. he was on Joe Rogan podcast. Red Weinstein. Red Weinstein. So you, you know of him. Harvey Weinstein. Uh, do, do you agree? Anyways, so, I'll t- so what he was saying is that he told Joe Rogan to close your eyes. Actually, let's do it with you. Okay. Close your eyes. Am I, is this going to get us canceled? It probably may. All but right. It has. So think of a, think of a woman. That is hot, but <laughs> not beautiful. Can you do it? Uh, that's going to take you ages. What does that mean? Hold on. Uh, I don't know. Really? You failed the test. That means he's wrong. Okay, let me think. This is probably going to take like half an hour, but I'll think no, of it. No, please don't take half an hour. Uh, <laughs> All right, okay. I, let's, let's forget this part. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you were saying that men usually can find certain women that are beautiful no. But not hot, or hot but what not mean, beautiful. Okay, because he says that there are essentially three re- reproductive strategy that like the male brain has. Mm. Uh, the third one is like pretty bad and unspeakable. It's basically like you know when you force someone. So let's forget that. <laughs> um, well, no, that's not enough. That's the I'm reprehensible joking. one. But he was saying that the second strategy is that you invest in someone because the the amount of care and time that's required in raising a child is uh, is it requires like team effort. Right. So the way you find a reproductive partner is by um, is by investing in someone, mm. and then eventually they agree to be the mom of your child, right? Yeah. Or the third one is the is a strategy where someone agrees to engage in. Uh, reproduction without investing in them. Yes. Which is, according to, what was his name? Weinstein? Mm. According to him, a lotto win. Okay. Basically, that you are still getting the reproductive need that you are uh, coded for, but without having to invest in the woman at all. Like a one-night stand, essentially. Essentially, that's a one-night stand. And it's become more common with birth control and stuff like that. So what he was saying is... That when you think someone is hot, your brain is thinking that I could get reproductive, I could get the reproductive function without investing. Yeah, yeah. When you think someone is beautiful, you think that, okay, that's when you're willing to invest in someone for that reproductive function. Makes sense. So, this is the other thing which, like, I guess comes down to. That's what... My girlfriend huh. used to get offended by that all the time. Is is it offensive? So you agree with it? Because I'm still thinking about it. No, she wasn't about offended it. by it. She was kind of just, what do you mean I'm not hot? I was saying they're two different types. <laughs> I knew this instinctively. Right. right. Yeah. And you want to be like, beautiful. like you don't want to be hot because otherwise, pump and dump. <laughs> if you're beautiful, people are going to want to stay around because yeah. beauty lasts a lot longer. But here's the controversial mm. bit that Weinstein was talking about. He was saying that, a lot of the a lot of women today are thinking that by because there's a lot of like uh, emphasis on being hot in media and shit, right? Like that's what an ideal girl is supposed to be, like curvy, whatever, whatever is considered to be really hot, like an Instagram thought. And he was saying that that's a trap because you will get attention, mm. but it's the wrong kind of attention. Yes, yeah, like so there are like uh, the two different ways that male brain function. If you're gonna appease for the hotness then their brain is automatically not going to want to invest. That's interesting. They'd want to go for the hotness. But there is that rare person. Hot but how many do you think there are in the world? Ten? <laughs> is that a cancelable <laughs> thing a that lo- I've just... A cancel... Panthera. I'm gonna, I'm gonna I uh, really think that we've... Uh, 
push that envelope. <laughs> I don't think that there's anything else that. Well, we can I don't say think I don't think it can be that cancelable because the last comment Joe is, Rogan ask says Bill it. if he would fund genetically engineered cat girls. <laughs> That guy's been asking that Can't a lot. I've just been ignoring that one. Um, no, the, why? Uh, well, he has a right to voice his opinion. No, he Sandy doesn't. says beauty is also subjective. I guess it's true. But Women, Sandy, is hotness subjective? I think it is because some people that it, I we, think we, are we beautiful. Want, I really want to hear your opinions on this as well. She's, she's very horny. <laughs> she watches yeah. a lot of Spanish. She has the same voice that Ali has. What's that? Out of the seven deadly sins, as we were discussing on the late podcast, and I'd like to just bring it up because it's my new self-help This guy's paradigm. a Bible basher now. All of a I'm a Bible basher. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I'm Catholic. Give me your necklace. No, you're a poser. You're not getting this. I don't know if I am a poser. I think I'm more of a Christian than you no, are. No, you're not. You're my not. life is much more Christian than you. Yeah. I'm yeah. obsessed yeah. with fish. <laughs> That's the end. Yeah, but you're too <laughs> pro-Muslim. <laughs> they are too. It's the same book. Let's be honest. It's just a different translation. I don't know. I haven't. Marilini is asking, "Can you be hot on the inside?" But that's beauty. You certainly can. That's not beauty. Well, you can yeah, just have an exceptional true. personality. No, I think that actually being hot, having a hot personality comes to <clears throat> understanding the art of seduction. It was like what you were talking about with that stripper you met <laughs> in, in Adelaide. Jesus. I think. I think really the seduction programming can kind of be reverse engineered. You can learn it. And as a result, become steamy. But having a hot personality means that you're able to elicit a feeling of horniness when you're around them. In fact, I get that sometimes. Sometimes when you're just talking to a woman that you don't find that physically attractive, you notice that you get a boner anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes you just get oh boners God. without even being around the girl. Yeah, sometimes hot you just get not. boners. So maybe it's got nothing to do yeah. with that. Maybe I was just having a boner. What, just in public? I was just getting a public boner. Jesus Christ. What, so you've never done that? <laughs> you've never? Well, well the like reason that 11. you wouldn't is because your seven deadly sin is slothfulness. Yeah, and I'm and not that 13 takes too much anymore. Effort. That's also a good counter argument. But if you look at the way that I'm dressed, <laughs> I'm fair. clearly still 13. <laughs> that's fair. I'm still 12 uh, years old. Hey, I'm <laughs> looking to buy a house. Oh, no, I'm going to put her again. I'm going to go. Uh, I think so. And that is how I interact with people. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Mr. Sumbersher. Is your uh, mom home? <gasps> Hello, Mr. Plibersek. Uh, I would I would say one thing. Once the initial hotness or beautifulness is over, then goddamn personality matters a lot. <laughs> <laughs> like, then, like, eventually the hotness wears off. Actually, beautifulness doesn't wear off. Hotness wears off. That's nah, beautifulness point. wears off, let's be honest. Really? Be uh, well, when you get to that yeah, age where everybody looks point. exactly the same, you can't tell the difference between <laughs> Bob Hawke and Ida Bite Rose. <laughs> <laughs> but still, Kim Beasley is still oh very recognisable. True, he looks the exactly outline. the same. <laughs> He's oh the Rod man. Stewart of politics. He doesn't age. So how do you? <laughs> what, what advice, Jordan, would you have for girls that are out there looking for just that guy? They're nice women and they're looking for that perf. They're looking for a guy that's going to be, I don't know, like, Good, reliable, or whatever. Or a Jordan Peterson say, confident and powerful. How how do you, how do they get them? Do they not be hot? No, you're going to have to increase the quality of person that you are. I really think that when it comes to relationships, water meets water. If you are a desirable person, and I'm not just talking about physical appearance here. I'm talking about having a psychology that is put together. I'm talking about having, uh, you know, like a, a personable aura around you, because this happens a lot as well. Miss, I've could attest to this. Sometimes when you go to parties, and this this has happened frequently, women that we would have killed, I, I swear, look, Miss, I've, you're a close and dear friend of mine, you have been for 15 years, but if I was a 15-year-old and some of the chicks in class were like, let's just do it on the in front of everyone as well, it doesn't matter, just <laughs> yeah. whatever the circumstances yeah. are, let's go in that trash can. Yeah. The problem is you have to kill Miss Love. I'm sorry, but like, and I think you'd understand, you'd have to take one for the team. Look, I do. Yeah, I, I would. I would. Like, <laughs> in high school, yeah. I kill both high school of you for yeah. one. And you know what? Yeah. To this day, I'd still think worth it. Yeah. Even yeah. if that seat was yes. empty, Ali wasn't there. I'd be like, look, Ali is in heaven looking down and saying, I would have done the same. Yeah, Everybody's yeah. Have you, take have you one ever for the been team. in a situation where you've like, um, let's say, uh, fornicated with someone and immediately regretted it? <laughs> 
<laughs> look, I don't know really how to answer that. Uh, Immediately, look, let's move on. there's no way to. Like, I wouldn't bring say. I wouldn't look. Uh, no, maybe the next day. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, immediately, nah, yeah. nah. But what I could safely say is, uh, if I was offered the same proposition now, I would say no. Partially because I've matured as a human being and just don't have the same hormones raging as when I was fifteen. <laughs> yes, it's different. Uh, look, your, your friendships between you guys have blossomed over the years as well. So there's <laughs> that. But also, <laughs> this is the other thing. Just take a. This limb. is the other thing. With age, two things happen. Either you become way more glorious or you go crazy. People that do not work on their mind. Right. That's true. Like Speaking to them now, honestly, I still think they are as hot, if not hotter than what they were in high school, physically. But mm. when you speak to them, you notice yourself physically backing away. <laughs> And it's just because they've gone nuts from not exercising their mind for 10 years. Is that right. why it happens? I thought it was all the acid. That doesn't help. That's, that's what it is. That doesn't help. That's the thing. Instead of reading books, they took acid. Mm. And it opens the mind, but it's the same as opening an empty room. Having said that, I did shrooms the other Jeez. day for the first time. And I got to say, do you know how you said Hurt Locker was really good? I saw... Ransom starting Mel Gibson on Shrooms. <laughs> I don't even know what that movie Neither is. Do I. It is the greatest movie of all time. Thank you. Oh I don't know if it was because of the Shrooms, but... By I way, think it was the Shrooms. I think it would be like, damn, that movie was Did good. Did you trip out? I did. I did a little bit. Just like It was the bit? first time I did it, and it was... Yeah, it just like, sort of like heightened my senses. So I went for a walk to the lake with my friend, and it was pretty cool. Then I watched uh, Ransom starring Mel Gibson, which was even better than that walk. So what did you observe insane. about your mind? I didn't have nearly, maybe I didn't take as much, but like I didn't have like any, it just seemed like to me, it only seemed like the when I went to the lake that the, the waves, the water was just more popping. Yeah, and, everything's heightened. But it's not, I wasn't, I did sort of think about uh, like shit that is... Um, I don't know when you go into your mind, but I do that even when I'm sober. So I don't know if it was the shrooms. The only recognizable difference that I felt on shrooms was that, yeah, my senses and my visions were just like slightly, I wouldn't even say heightened, skewed would be a better word. Mm. Well, skewed in a good way. Skewed in a good way. I do actually think that it does. If I know that tech billionaires or... People in Silicon Valley, which I assume everyone's a tech billionaire, but mm. I don't really have any evidence to back this up, right? Okay, I'm just shooting from the hip here, guys. This is a wild ride. Um, I think that they all microdose throughout the day. Yeah. Well, before Wolf of Wall Street, if someone told me that every stockbroker does cocaine, I would have said, that's ridiculous. <laughs> but now I agree. So I'm guessing... Yeah, it seems like that Indian guy from Google is tripping on shrooms all the time. Well, but what, what tech billionaire movie changed that for you? The internship? <laughs> <laughs> is that the one with... Yeah. Uh, Owen Wilson the, yeah, taught yeah, me yeah. what it's like to be a Fuck, tech that billionaire. that mad. Put it on it, Google. No. Isn't it just a big ad for Google? Yeah, it's a yeah. horrible movie. It works movie. for me, though. <laughs> so you put it on the Google. Just say Google. Yeah, yeah, that's what I said. Put it well, on I the Google. I think one of the greatest films of all time <laughs> is Snakes on a Plane, and that was just a big ad yes. for uh, that's the Red joke. Bull. Oh, oh right. I thought I it was know. a big ad for Samuel L. Jackson because I thought he was awesome after that movie. You didn't think it Oh, right, that was the moment. Yeah, well, I, but he plays the same character every I time. I know, but what it's was so it? good. It's just the fact that he was getting so old. That no, that one, his head. that one scene where he goes, <laughs> "I've had enough of these snakes on this goddamn plane." That's well, do you know the story behind that? <laughs> no. It was when the internet was first emerging, and somebody had heard that snakes on a plane was coming out. And so they made a crap trailer using that really old stickdeath.com sort of animation <coughs> of what they assume Snakes on a Plane was. And then it was just Samuel L. Jackson saying, There are motherfucking snakes on this motherfucking plane. And then the director, even though it was in post-production, 
said, no, nah, we're going to have to bring back everyone, get back all the actors, <laughs> yeah. get back Samuel L. Jackson, pay him the extra $30 million that he wants for that <laughs> one scene so we can get him to say that one sentence. And if you go back and look at it, it looks it's different. very... <laughs> so it's like flicking from this camera to the camera that's both on you guys. <laughs> that, yeah. that. That's so, hey, I, that's better now. That's fucking gold. Yeah. No, I mean, I knew that. There's a little bit of history for you that really should be immortalised in the Hollywood Hall of Fame. And as a young lad, I really enjoyed the scene where the snake gets that titty. Because that was why was that hot? It was because I didn't. I didn't combination have combination of bestiality of and course. necrophilia. It's of because that's, that's I had into. no internet during that time, and that was my only form of porn. <laughs> well, Fuck. as our guide in Pakistan said, Pakistan is a very horny country. And. <laughs> Jesus. It is indeed. It is indeed. <laughs> Look, we don't have a lot of time anymore. Unfortunately, we've got only ten minutes. But I did want to bring up this one segment um, because I think Jordan that this is something you should really look into. So, um, our producer who wants to be named, he, he wants his name to be the Stig. The Stig. The Stig. The Stig. Yes, the Stig. and it should be. That's gold. The That's the best nickname that we have out of all of them so far. I mean, Stig. the worst one by a mile is the editor. Isn't it <laughs> pathetic that this the this editor. organization that you know supports a major party is so controversial that people actually have to hide their identities? It's so weird, eh? I'm not knocking the Stig. Mm. I'd prefer to call him the Stig. Mm. Uh, and I'm not knocking Me anybody too. else that does it, but I understand fully why they have to do it as well. I don't. Well, it's because you just have so many political enemies that everybody's just looking for an excuse to bludgeon you. And they don't have the added advantage of me who lives in a room with portraits of myself. Thank you so much for sending them all in, by the way. <laughs> yeah, but those people like... And they're my friends now. But those people just, they just live in a room that's, you know, in the burbs. <laughs> like they're not like... No, they also... Well, this is the thing. If you also have a part-time job, you need a nickname. Okay, I'll pay that. But also, I do just really like saying the sting. I like it too. I, I that, that's is there a funnier voice on earth than mm. Jeremy fucking whatever his name is? Is it Corbin? Corbin. 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 Jeremy Corbin. <laughs> Jeremy Buckingham. <laughs> Any of those will do. Jeremy, uh, who I'm assuming is a character in one of uh, Charles Dickens' novels. <laughs> You need to go more block nose. You block your nose because he's smoked a lot of cigars. <laughs> <laughs> the most manly smoking of all. <laughs> uh, uh, guys, why the fuck didn't you watch my car review ad? I think I'm going to have to kill that character they because of how poorly it performed. Really? What, what was that all about? Shit, I was fuck. so proud of the car review character. I can't believe that. Toto Lancaster. It didn't do well. Yeah, I'm going to give it one more opportunity where we're going to race, I guess, my dad's ute with Ali's car. <laughs> and it's like, what's faster, a Lamborghini or this Ferrari? Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Come on. What is wrong with you people? Don't maybe, you know quality maybe, when you see maybe it? Maybe get an actual nice car. No. Uh, no, 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 no. That's never happening. That's not hey, you saying my dad's ute isn't nice? My car is a fucking piece of junk. But it, look, like, before we go, send it this way, mate. I did want to yeah, yeah, bring yeah, up this, this last way. thing. Jordan, I didn't know this, but did you know that submarine um, deal with France fell through? Sucked in. Yeah, it fell through. Here's here's what Stick sent us, right? This is uh, an independent the Australia stick. article on this. Look, just I'll, I'll read a little bit of it to give you an idea of how much of a major fuck up that was, right? So here's the design and cost errors. Sev uh, this is, I'm quoting the article. Cost. Several of Australia's specifications were plain foolish. As Benoit Kepmark summarized, a nuclear submarine with a diesel electric engine is a fail. An American combat system won't work in a French vessel because Americans and French do not talk. Lead acid <laughs> batteries will be obsolete well before the submarines are even delivered. Jesus. So now that the deal has fallen through, France's original tender documents had projected between 20 to 25 billions of initial cost, and the deal was signed for 50 billion. In uh, February 2020, the, the Library Research Service says that the new, because the deal fell through, um, the, the new estimates are that it's going to cost somewhere between 80 billion to $145 billion for the same thing. In fact, in fact, here's the other thing. Most experts were shocked 
that how why would the French tender take over precedence when the Japanese and uh, I, can't, I can't remember there was another country were significantly below and we're Germany. meeting old Germany and we're meeting all of these requirements. The last reason why they think that this was a dud, check this out. Multiple failures were evident. The most basic is accountability. Since the negotiations began with France, um, Australia has had three prime minister, three deputy PMs, three failed treasurers, five defense ministers, four ministers for defense industry. Of the 15 individuals to have held these portfolios, seven have left the parliament. None remaining has the competence to deliver for Australia or the medal to take responsibility. And the current defense minister is on hospital leave. There is zero and continuity. You know Most of them would have gone Jesus. into lobby groups. Yeah. They the submarines are lobby clear. groups because this is something that I'll be. I've, I've got a very big video coming out about it at some point when I think that I can slip it through the propaganda model. God, isn't it amazing? I remember watching Chomsky's propaganda model uh, manufacturing consent. I think for the first time in university, and I remember him saying that there's certain journalists in it that see glimpses in the propaganda model where they can release information that they otherwise wouldn't be allowed to release. Mm -hmm. Those are the really good cynical ones that understand what the game is. You're Michael Wests. <clears throat> I've got to say I'm pretty proud of this. I think I understand the same thing, and I think you understand it as well. You can see when the tide is turning and for a brief second go, hey, here's a video that like counters the narrative. Otherwise, you kind of just buy how pervasive it is have to ride off of whatever the fuck it's talking about but uh one video that i've got coming out about it is talking about exactly why these submarines were signed and this is the amazing thing i've got another video coming out as well i was researching that and i got the gatekeeper to research because i just thought that this would just be such a good way to hit uh scott morrison turn the china narrative on him of so pro-Chinese. When you look at it, when you look at the facts, he's extremely pro-Chinese. He has sold so many assets to the Chinese, this man that's mm. tough on China. Nothing, nothing in comparison to what the Labor Party has said. I think one of the first acts that they did was increase the amount that has to be investigated in terms of property handlings from $100 million to a $1 billion. That was one of the first acts that the Liberals did, These, you know, the party that's so tough on China. I'm telling you, it is the 1984 thing of, are these countries even at war? The countries that they're constantly professing that they're hating each other and you never even know it in the book. And there's this perpetual kind of... I love that concept, that there's just this little professionalised war of these teeny specialised forces that they film mm. to make it look like something big is happening when in reality it really isn't. And I honestly think, to a large extent, that is what is happening in the South China Sea because it just... Mm. really feeds into the narrative that America needs for its propaganda, what Australia needs for its propaganda, what the Philippines needs, what America needs, what the Vietnamese needs. It's not going to be exactly the same as in uh, 1984 where it's a complete ruse, but it's definitely an opportunity that they can take advantage of. Just like in 9-11 after the planes hit, they used that as an excuse to invade Iraq. I think the same thing is happening. But one of the main things that I was looking into was the lobby group Aspie and... God, what they have done. What they are are glorified weapon salesmen. They are pretty much... Panthera, Panthera, Panthera. Why? Uh, they will take Panthera, this out. They'll Panthera, take Panthera, Panthera. Out. Just I evil would people. caution you, keep that for your main video. I really... Really? Look, this pretty you know how much I love that point, but yeah. keep that for your main video. All right, I'll just give the general point then. <laughs> Panthera. <laughs> <laughs> regardless of whether you agree that China is a big threat or not, you know Ali and I's position, and then we obviously, just to balance it out, have Some the most sense. profound you know, <laughs> yeah. uh, expert of our times on foreign policy, Miss Love Balance. Yeah. so much support whenever this happens. People love Miss Love in these situations. Because they think we're, we've sold our, I don't know, they probably think that we're getting money from China or something. And the unions and get up. And all of Fucking that shit. both of you. All Sell of out. that shit. But when Miss Love is like, but hold on a minute, listen. are we sure that we want to be friends with a country that's national flag is red? <laughs> are we sure we want to do that, guys? Union. Of course, Labor would. Yeah, unionists. But uh, regardless of whether you think that they're an existential threat to Australia or not, I'll tell you who doesn't. 
Scott Morrison, by his actions, he is selling off a bundle of Australia's assets to the Chinese. And it's not just the Chinese. It's any foreign company that wants it. They'll give it to him. <clears throat> While he's doing that, he is ramping up the debt in Australia to hundreds of billions of dollars to buy things like these submarines. How are they doing it? Because they're constantly keeping this idea that China's going to invade any day, running through the press, so that nobody questions why military expenditure doubled and will soon quadruple. Nobody's asking that question. We need guns. And what are we buying? Yeah, but what guns are we buying? Do we need guns from the 80s? Well, they, because they're that's retro. What we're buying because, and why? Because this lobby group has so much influence on Canberra that it can it can walk in and say to submarines... When, when I was writing this, this was a video that's just in the works. It's just in the can for like another time. At, at that time, it was $60 billion. But see, the, the German subs were better in every way and they were ready to go. We would have had subs in 2013. They probably already need to be replaced now, but they were $10 billion. Now we're up to, what, $145 billion? $145 is the new one. Really? $145 billion for submarines and that still don't <laughs> exist. And let's not forget oh, that not okay. only is it $145 billion, but the submarine delivery is really late. So let's just hope China doesn't attack us anytime in the next <laughs> Because let's 10 be honest, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're spending $145 billion to defend ourselves from China with invisible submarines. <laughs> yeah, with invisible submarines. <laughs> Fuck. Anyways, that, um, I think that's going to really help in a country that has 1.3 billion people, don't you? Yeah. Well, maybe this. It's, it's really sad, but. That's the end. Know. If you want to be depressed more, we are going live to the Friendly Geordies Up Late podcast that is not live at all. We <laughs> don't edit it. It's live so when we do it. It's, well, it, it's TV live. Yeah, it's it TV was live TV. at a point in time. Yeah. <laughs> for who? For us. <laughs> anyway. Well, yeah, it'll be live for us. <laughs> That's what we're saying. Thank you so much for watching. If you Thank want you. Up Late exclusive content, you know where to go. Friendly Stories. Geordies podcast. Stories coming.